Hey guys, I have some goodies to share with you all today. Thanks for joining me. These are fragrances that a couple were gifted to me and the others I purchased myself over the past six weeks or so and wanted to share out with you what they are and give you my thoughts. So the first two were shared with me by So Avant Garde. I'm a partner with them and I have a discount code of Veronica20 that you're welcome to use. I asked them for two fragrances that I thought I would really, really like. And I really, really like one of them and I like the other. The first one is Syrah by Tiziana Terenzi. I've had my eye on this fragrance for forever. I mean, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I am a stan for Tiziana Terenzi fragrances. I have had maybe one or two from the line that maybe weren't for me because they were too masculine. Otherwise, the rest of the fragrances that I have tried, I, I have really loved. And this is no exception. Love the gold bottle on this. And this was a massive hit in my house. My husband immediately fell in love with this, thought it was super sexy and wanted me to wear it on the day that it arrived. He was like, spray that on, babe. And I did. <laughs> I will say this gives me vibes of Tibet if you have tried that from Tiziana Terenzi, except that this is maybe deeper on the fruit aspects and has a very far background, slight woody leather accord to it that doesn't come across as that, but adds a lot of depth. So this is quince and passion fruit. Now there is rose in the fragrance, although if you look at the way that was judged on Fragrantica, it seems like people think that's more of a background note. For me, rose is right there alongside the fruity aspects, the quince and the passion fruit. So it's at the same time juicy as it is, very elegantly floral. The rose that's in this fragrance for me is a much more mature rose. We're talking about a rose that has fully blossomed and is in the height of its life. That kind of rose alongside the fruitiness, a little bit of muskiness, like I said, a little bit of woodiness and like a little like boop, touch of leather super far in the background where you might not even detect that it's there. I think this is really fantastic, long lasting, projecting. It's everything that I wanted it to be and more because the rose in here surprised me as something that I really enjoyed and liked alongside the fruitiness. So really fantastic special occasion fragrance or date night fragrance. Hubby couldn't get enough of this on me and even the kids said that I smell good. So Syrah. The other fragrance that So Avant Garde sent to me that I do like is from Juicebox and this is Cheeky Smile. I've heard a lot of people talk about this and I was really interested in it. I didn't realize that it looks, I think this is supposed to look like a record, like Jukebox, except Juicebox. I get it, I think. Is that is that right? For those of you that are <laughs> fans of this brand, it comes in a hefty bottle with frosted sides. I thought this was a really nice presentation. Let me tell you what I like about this fragrance. When I sprayed this on, it reminded me so much of skin from clean clean the clean reserve version it's a like your skin but better kind of fragrance so if you're if you're familiar with molecule or one from eccentric molecules and those kinds of fragrances that are molecular in nature uh juliet has a gun not a perfume that fragrance those types of fragrances that you spray on and it's going to smell a little bit different on everybody it's going to mix with your body chemistry different than it would the next person the difference between this and skin is that this is a little bit heavier on the woodiness than skin uh, is as a fragrance. Skin has a little bit of sweetness from praline, and I forget the other note that adds a, a little touch of sweetness to that. This one is more squarely a unisex fragrance that I think does really well when your skin warms up, does nicely with your, or plays nicely rather, with your body chemistry, has really good projection and longevity as a fragrance. You won't have performance problems out of this. And I think it is one of those intriguing fragrances. If you like Paper by Commodity, Heck, if you like the smell of fresh paper, that's appealing to you and you can imagine, imagine that sort of as a sexy scent, that's what you're getting in Cheeky Smile. I don't know that the name really matches the scent that I'm getting, but I do enjoy the bottle and I like the scent and look forward to wearing this more. So again, this is available just like Syrah on So Avant Garde for 20% off using my code Veronica20. You can shop the link in the description box. It is an affiliate link if you would like. Let's keep going. The next two fragrances have made the rounds here on YouTube and I reviewed them on my opinions on popular fragrances or they full bottle worthy series and that's all linked in the description box too. I ended up purchasing two full bottles because I really enjoyed my sampling experience with these. They are from Giardini, sorry, excuse me, Giardini de Toscana. <laughs> There's Bora Bora and then there is Bianco Latte. Let me talk about this one first, Bora Bora, which I did wear this month. I actually layered this with a Manoy oil. 
what is it? Manoy de Tahiti oil. Y'all know what I'm talking about? It's kind of like an old school oil and it smells like yellow florals. I put that on first. Y'all, in my mind, I wear a lot of lotion and oils. In reality, I forget to reach for them. So like I might once or twice a month actually reach for a base. Anyway, when I first sampled Bora Bora, I liked it a lot. But for me, it was like this heady white floral. So I was having like this cognitive dissonance experience between what I thought this should smell like, which everybody talked about it being this suntan lotion, uh, coconut forward fragrance. I didn't quite get that. I got mostly white florals. And at the time that I sampled it, I thought this is nice, but I have a lot of other white florals in my collection. Do I really need this? Well, I revisited the sample and decided, let me go on and get a full bottle because your full bottle experience can be very different than your sampling experience. And I'm glad I did. If I had to choose between the two, Bora Bora and Bianco Latte, right now I would choose this one. I do love Bianco Latte too. It's what I'm wearing today. And I'll tell you about that in a minute. So yes, this is heady as it opens. This is tremendous, like a burst of white florals when it opens. And I don't mean like your vintage old school white florals. I'm talking about a fresh, happy white floral. Uh, and as it starts to settle down, you get more of the white and yellow floral mix and the creamy coconut does start to come in. All of that is sitting on a bed of vanilla and musk. It's a divine fragrance in my opinion. I love the experience of this. I enjoyed wearing it the full day wear I had. And I come by in my closet and sniff this quite a bit. <laughs> I do also like these simplistic architectural style bottles. Yes, so this is a big win for me. I really enjoyed this. And then Bianco Latte is my scent of the day. This is more on the gourmand end. I find this one to be softer than Bora Bora. Bora Bora really lasted a good portion of the day and projected quite a bit. This one gets a little bit softer. Not that it's a skin scent by any means, but it's just a smaller, more intimate scent bubble. And there's nothing wrong with that. For me, this smells like a baked yummy dessert, like a cinnamon bun type of experience. But again, like a, a delicate version of that. We're not talking about like overly sweet gourmand where, you know, you're going to be like people that aren't into gourmands are going to hate it. Not that it's a softer like cinnamon bun experience with like, I think I described it as having like a pistachio paste, like a marzipan. -y. Marzipan is out of almonds and pist you know, pistachios are different, but a nutty thing on top you all. <laughs> a cinnamon bun with like a nut paste on top. Uh, so sweet and spicy vanilla, really nice, really very pleasant. You have to be a gourmand lover and you have to like scents that are nearly edible. There are more edible scents than this. Okay, so it's not like deep into gourmand territory, but it's got like one good strong foot with a thick thigh accompanying that foot over into gourmand territory. Bianco Latte, glad to have this a little bit softer than its uh, sister Bora Bora over there, but really nice. Next, I want to tell you all about two, not one. Two Stefan Humbert Lucas fragrances that rock my world. <laughs> they were everything I dreamed and more and worth the wait for them to ship all the way from Harrods. All right, let's get into this. The first one I won't spend a lot of time on because I just talked about it in my June Fragrance Awards video. Go check that out if you're interested in a longer description. But it is Soleil de Jeda Mango Kiss. First of all, these bottles are divine. I do own the original Soleil de Jeda, which I do not encourage blind buying that, nor this one. This is, in my mind, an incredibly complex fragrance that is mega sexy. When I sprayed this on, hubby went wild. He wanted me to wear it uh, and has been asking about this fragrance. And every time I've worn it since then, which has probably been like three times, one full day and two kind of half day wears, he's been like, ooh, what is that? <laughs> it is Mango Kiss. Forget what the notes say about this because it's going to be hard for you to imagine what this smells like. So the way that I would describe this is it has an interpretation of a ripe mango in the fragrance. So it's not a realistic like juvenile kind of fruity body sprayish experience. This is a sophisticated impressionist version of mango and coconut and this sort of slight ashiness in the background. That's the way I described it in my June Fragrance Awards. Now that I'm smelling it, maybe even a little hint of like a, a very soft powdery leather and all combines for a mega sexy fragrance for a daring wearer, long lasting uh, and projecting, not into the nighttime y'all, not me, it's a night scent. Oh, it would do well as a nighttime scent. I wore it in the daytime. But I mean that in terms of the longevity of this, you're gonna get six to eight hours, which for me is pretty darn good. Maybe more, maybe you get 10 and 12, I don't know. But that's what I'm reporting out from my full day wear amazing, expensive, $290 for 50 mils, at least those are the US prices. So see if you can get it at Harrods or get a discount code for, I think it's on Lucky Scent. 
The next one, I love maybe even more than Mango Kiss, and Mango Kiss was a big hit. Venom Incarnate. Oh, I got to tell y'all, this has given me all of the strawberry shortcake of my dreams vibes. It's like strawberry shortcake on a stripper pole. <laughs> maybe not that crazy, but it's a sexy, sexy strawberry. Whew. Okay, maybe more like strawberry shortcake hits the runway. But as an adult, like she's in her hot couture coming down the runway and she knows she's got it going on. This is strong strawberry at the top, lots of other berries, vanilla, a little bit, a little hint of like a woody leatheriness in the background, just enough to give it pop and give it some intrigue and some mystery without dominating the fragrance or being off-putting for people that aren't into leathers. This is mega sexy. Husband loved this on me when I sampled it. He loved it on me when it came. Even my son, I wore this one night as we were watching movies in the family room. Son came down. He was probably 12 feet from me and he was like, who smells so good? I was like, it's me, son. He goes, mom, that's, that's pretty good. He's a harsh critic. So there you go, Venom Incarnate, a huge win. And like I said, I'd have a hard time choosing a favorite between these two because they're really good. But I think right now, this one is slightly eking out by like, you know, a, a foot in front of the race, but this one is coming for it. You know what I mean? This next fragrance, I don't know where the heck in this room I have stored it. I've looked under the bed. I've looked in drawers. I've looked on shelves. I've looked in our armoire. I don't know where the heck I put that fragrance, but I'm a little upset because I'd like to wear it again soon. It was really good. It's called 173 by Michael Malul. The only other one I have from this uh, brand is called Atara, which is one of my sweetest, sweetest, most delectable fruity floral fragrances like in my entire collection. I love that one. 173 Candy is a very light, airy version of a molecular skin scent type of a deal except it projects and it lasts a really long time, but it's on the softer side. It's very, very demure. It doesn't scream. It's floral and citrusy, a little bit of musk and woodiness to it. And I think is like a massive crowd pleaser in the sense that it is uh, pretty in a mature way without being cloying, overwhelming, or any of those things. It's very wearable and one that can be worn on multiple occasions, you know, from morning, like you can take it to your workout all the way through an evening affair. If you want to smell pretty, have that like your skin, but better effect. And you want that to be a little bit sort of sweet, even gourmandy leaning with some woodiness to it. It's really a delightful fragrance and one worth checking out. Just note when you try it, if you're used to super beast mode fragrances, this is one where you're going to be like, I don't understand what all the hype is about because it has a really sort of soft texture to it to the point where maybe you'd be disappointed if you weren't expecting that if you know to expect that and you go into it with that like your skin but better except girly gourmand woody type of thing you might really enjoy this I thought it was a winner Eureka I found it <laughs> 173 candy it was hiding in a basket down at the bottom of my closet don't ask me why it was down there I don't even remember why I put it there okay the next fragrance is one that I do like a lot but I have to tell you, I was expecting a lot more based on the reviews. And that's why it's tricky sometimes to watch these reviews. I admit that even though I do reviews for all of you, <laughs> I understand how that goes. And I know what it's like to smell something that you thought was going to be one way based on reviews, and then it's not. So this falls into that category, but I do like it. And I think it's worth checking out. This is Jimmy Choo Vanilla Love. So this kind of made the rounds here a little bit ago on YouTube. I do like this bottle. I think it's really, really nice looking with these little facets in it. And I like the sort of disco ball <laughs> effect of this, whatever you call that texture, like a pebble texture of the top on it. What does this smell like to me? If you smell Gentle Fluidity Gold by MFK or anything along those lines, it's kind of in that vein, except to think about an even more simplistic version of it. Like if Gentle Fluidity Gold is Beyonce, this is maybe like the Young Blue Ivy version of that. It's a very, very nice vanilla. The thing that I think I would say about this is that it is more simplistic than I thought it would be. That doesn't mean it's a bad thing. In fact, if you want a nice vanilla, let me, let me tell you what I'm talking about. About. If you're familiar with this, Vani from Otremer as a simple vanilla that's easy for day-to-day -day wear, not complex, easy to figure out, you know, like a white t-shirt vanilla kind of fragrance that you could grab anytime, anywhere. I feel like this is maybe just slightly more sophisticated than this. So if you thought that this was maybe like a younger girl's version of vanilla, this is maybe the adult simple vanilla. Still lovely, still wonderful, beautiful bottle. And I enjoy it, but wasn't necessarily like this complex, gorgeous vanilla that I was expecting. 
fragrance that I fell in love with when I sampled it. And in fact, I couldn't even wait until I recorded it in the video of like, you know, hyped fragrances and is it worth a full bottle? I went ahead and just bought it even before I filmed that video, which is yet to come by the way. <laughs> this one is from Omnia Profumi and this is Platino Eau de Parfum. Look, some people are gonna find this fragrance to feel a little synthetic to their nose, maybe even a little like, dare I say, plasticky. But I'm gonna tell you about my experience and why I love this. First, let me give some props to the bottle. I love these heavy weighted fragrances where there's heft on the bottom and there's some curvature on the top along the lines of like your bear from Victoria's Secret, if you're familiar with that, or like not au absolute that I have from uh, Bottega Veneta, that kind of curvature. It's so elegant and pretty in that way. Here, <sighs> I love that this fragrance smells very milky, coconutty, it has almond, and it is just like a gourmand lover's dream, but on the subtle side, it's a subtle gourmand. It doesn't have this overwhelming sugariness, syrupiness to it. It stays on the lighter side, like it's, it's well, it kind of borders between milky and creamy. Like if you think of milk, a milky fragrance as being less dense and creamy as being more hefty, this has a little bit of an airiness to it that I really appreciate. As a background to this fragrance, there's a lovely vanilla and musk. The vanilla is subtle, the musk is subtle. The key players here are that milkiness, almond, and the coconut. And the coconut is uh, not heavy, sweet, overwhelmingly like creamy at all right it's a, a sort of middle of the road kind of coconut middle of the road what am i trying to say <laughs> it's neither like deeply creamy coconut like in the can the condensed coconut not that and it's also not like a watery coconut it's somewhere in between one of the key players here though is the coconut almond and the milky accord a nostalgia inducing i can't tell you what it reminds me of it just takes me somewhere mentally and i really enjoy the experience of holding and spraying the bottle the atomizer is fabulous. This is so, so good for me, for me. Love. I have three more fragrances. The next one is pretty hyped up and I think it deserves the hype. This is Acro Bake, Acro Bake. I haven't had the best luck with Acro fragrances. There may be a little bit too literal of an interpretation. I tried Awake. If you're into a fragrance that smells like espresso, maybe a dark coffee or bordering on thickness like espresso, try Awake. It'll give you that, that fresh coffee bean type of a smell. This one, it's a lemon pastry. It's very close to Zara's pastry in Paris, a sweet pastry in Paris. I have that one too, except if you're familiar with the sweet pastry in Paris, it's a little thicker and more sugary. This one is a little bit lighter in terms of the tone and texture of the fragrance here. I love, there's something, you guys, you guys, somebody help me. There's something about the lemon in this fragrance that reminds me of a lemon fragrance of the past, but I can't quite put my finger on what. But I find myself sniffing this over and over again. It does give me that lemon bar smell, like I said, like a pastry in Paris does. Think about it this way. It's like a sweet pastry in Paris from Zara is the hot lemon bar straight out of the oven. So it's like fresh and it's gooey and it's super sweet and super thick. This is a cooled down lemon bar. Like you come by, you pick it up. It's got the little confectioner sugar on it and you sniff it, but it's definitely cooled down, but still has that like slightly gourmand, mostly lemon leaning powdery smell that's what you get here i will say the projection does get a little bit soft on this it's like a closer scent bubble for your enjoyment whoever comes in for a hug and it isn't the longest lasting fragrance maybe like in the four to six ish hour range i don't know i've worn it one time and that's about what i got from it but it is so delightful and so nostalgic and like so right on the money as a lemon gourmand <sighs> this actually made me revisit lira Lyra from Zerzhov. I have a dupe of Lyra that I enjoyed, and I think I'm actually ready for a bottle of Lyra. I didn't buy Lyra because I thought it was too soft for what it cost. And this fragrance has made me want to revisit that as almost an accompaniment to this, but an even sort of softer, more demure, like ballerina tutu version <laughs> of uh, this one, which is more your girl next door lemon pastry versus Lyra, which is like your ballerina ballerina lemon soft sweet fragrance anyway we're not here to talk about lira we're here to talk about bake and it gets two thumbs up for me fab so then i'm gonna call this portion of the video the jury's still out 
These are two fragrances that I lusted after, purchased, but I need to give them a little bit more time and I want to share why. The first is the highly coveted T for Two L'Artisan Perfumer. I tried to sound all sophisticated. L'Artisan, L'Artisan, this, the, the name's up here, okay? Off your mirror. <laughs> this is a tea fragrance. Wow. Surprise! It is not a sweet tea fragrance. It is not a feminine tea fragrance. It is a very spicy tea fragrance, and it has a darkness to it. The darkness! Let me tell you what this reminds me of. We have a tea shop. I'm in the Richmond area in Virginia. There was a tea shop. Well, it used to be on Carytown. I don't think it's there anymore. I don't care about that. Anyway, we went into the tea shop and the woman behind the counter, I told her, give me something unique and different. And she goes, you ain't ready for this. And I was like, try me. She gave me a tea called Russian Caravan. Intoxicating tea. It has a smokiness to it, a darkness to it, a super spiciness. It reminds me of like an, a, a tea that went on a grand adventure, a little like campfire smoke too. This gives me some of that, okay? It gives me some of that. This is the kind of tea that could potentially smell like body odor on people. If uh, you think about the spices in this, maybe not drying down on people's skin the way they want it to. I have tried this. I haven't done a full on day wear of it. I did what I call a half day wear, okay? <laughs> I put it on in the morning and wore it until maybe noonish, and then shifted gears completely. And I have to tell you, I was intrigued by this because it is dark and mysterious and spicy, almost bordering on BO. I have to say that. <laughs> but a good BO, do you know what I'm talking about with a good BO? Don't front. You know what I'm, you know what I'm, you, not you over there, you, you over there. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, I'm going to continue to try this. I do want to like this. There is such a thing as wanting to like a fragrance. And there are aspects of this that I like. I appreciate that Russian caravan feel, that smoky, dark, spicy, uh, almost like I'm in a room with mahogany panels on the walls and dark leather chairs. And you can smell the leather of the chairs and the wood of the varnish of the wood alongside your really spicy chai. Ooh, yeah. So let's keep playing with this and I'll come back to you. But this is a, the jury's out on this one. The other one that the jury's out on, it wasn't upon initial spray. When I first sprayed this, the heavens opened. The entire sky just brightened. Life was good. I thought I had found that scent <laughs> that I was going to come on here and just jump up and down about. And I do still want to jump up and down about the opening of Horchata de Vani. I said that all funny. Horchata. 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 Horchata de Vani. <laughs> this is from an indie house called Sphinx. And you can see that on the artwork. I don't have problems with this bottle. This is a nice, substantial bottle. In fact, I love the color. I think it tells you a little bit about how this fragrance opens, which I'll talk about in a second. I'm not super crazy about like the Sphinx name and the imagery, but whatever. Nobody asked me what the company name should be. It's fine. And it's a nice, sturdy little plate on there. I think it's a sticker, but I'm not going to try to pull it off, but it's sturdier than some of the other stickers I've seen. So keep that in mind. No late 1942. I'm talking to you. And it's got this like graduated upside down uh, pyramid shaped heavy metal cap. Okay. Now the atomizer on this is it's doing what it needs to do. Oh my God. The opening of this fragrance, first of all, first of all, let me give a shout out to a viewer, Jill in Arizona. Hey girl, hey, for putting me onto this fragrance. She mentioned it in a comment. I went and checked it out. I saw reviews and I was like, ooh, I'm gonna try that one. Who doesn't want to smell like horchata? Maybe you don't, I do. <laughs> the opening of this fragrance, the best way that I could describe it is what the color of this looks like. It's almost like this raspberry cinnamon amazingness. Like you're like, oh, that is so good. I sprayed it in the kitchen. In fact, my husband was like, Ooh, that's good. And I thought, Ooh, this is good. <laughs> Put it on. And that lasted for a bit. And then as it started to dry down, I was like, oh, what's happening now in the dry down? Wasn't so crazy about the dry down on my skin. I was looking for this sort of milky cinnamony concoction like my like horchata is. I like horchata. Do you? It's so, so good. But instead, it got a little bit of what I call stale on me, on my skin. I tell you, if I could hold on to the opening of this fragrance, this would be a signature scent that I would want to smell like every single day. It is 
absolutely divine in the opening. Sweet, feminine, berry-like, fruity. Like I said, that cinnamon smell, almost like a Kool-Aid powder with cinnamon in it. I don't know, there's just something really happy and delightful about the opening. The jewelry's still out on the dry down, and I want to test this some more. In fact, I was wearing this the other night. Hubby came by and he goes, I don't, I'm not crazy about what you're wearing. But he liked it on the opening, didn't realize that I was wearing this. So we're going to keep this and we're going to let this sit for a while and see if it gets stronger and better. That does happen with fragrances sometimes. Uh, anyway, I just want to check it out because I love the opening of this so much. Have you tried this? If so, what do you think about it? And have you tried the new, I think it's called Coconut Daiquiri, Coconut with K's from this line. I will say this came with a sample of, I think it's called Oceanic Symphony from the brand, which is very masculine to me, very traditional men's cologne with like this ocean kind of smell to it, this bright, fresh, uh, mineral ocean type of thing happening, which was nice too. Very, very strong, very strong on him. So I have other new fragrances that have made their way into my collection or fragrances that are new to me anyway, that I'll maybe save for another video. I don't wanna stuff too much in this one. Don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments. Let me know what you think about these and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, friends.